Hi, and welcome to the Dawa Response Team. In this edition of Dawa Responses, I'm going to take a look at a story told at a university by Hamza Tsortsis in one of his propaganda pep talks called Why Worship God? <laughs> Why indeed? And here it's a story about a guy called Moses, which is unrelated to the many violent and disgusting stories around Israel and Egypt. And this is more of a travel story, where he and his slave or boy or servant or whatever, travel to a place where the seas meet, where they are tricked by a devil and then turn back to travel by boat with a person highly knowledgeable in Islam due to some special extra connection to the Islamic God. It's supposed to demonstrate how we humans are stupid and why we are ignorant fools who only have limited knowledge. knowledge and wisdom. He has the picture. We just have the pixel. We have what they call the information representing a pixel, where their God sees the bigger, the complete picture, suggesting that blind faith and simply accepting nonsense is what is demanded by their God, rather than rational and critical thinking. Now, as is usually the case in the Quran, we don't get any detailed information, but Muslims somehow know that the guy in the story is called Khidr, the, the green or the fresh one. And they come up with all sorts of details they take from a story, not from the Quran, but in several hadith, which, you know, are found thousands of years after the alleged events. And some say it's actually an angel in disguise, some say it's Buddha, others swear it's Alexander the Great. The story in the Quran and the later hadiths are not new or unique. Similar stories have existed in the region from the Sumerians all the way to the Jews, where the contents varies, the originals making a lot more sense. Muslims insist that, of course, that Gilgamesh or Rabbi Yohanan or any of the other characters assigned in their respective stories have nothing at all to do with Moses and this trip described in the Quran. The story is found in the chapter The Cave, named after the sleepers who survived for centuries in a cave, a story also found in different cultures. So what is this Moses trip and why does Hamza sources mention it, stating that every Muslim knows it and then tells it anyway? In this case, it's placed into the realm of the Islamic God, who apparently assigns knowledge and subsequent tasks to selected humans. In this case, Moses, one of the highest prophets in Islam, and he has no knowledge of what a fisherman supposedly teaches him. Now, fishermen always play an important role in ancient texts due to their position in society, which was just a tad above women. So during this trip, we learn about how a wise fisherman destroys his boat, kills a boy, and straightens a wall without payment. Moses simply looks on, not understanding these actions. So why does the God in Islam need to perform magic and use puzzles to convey a message when those who get it wrong get tortured for eternity? The guy in the video explains it in the following way. He destroyed the boat so that an evil king could not seize it. He killed the boy because he was afraid the boy might just be an apostate and rebel against his God. He modified the wall without compensation so it would not fall over and reveal a hidden treasure, a treasure which would only be revealed at a later date to the deserving owners. Now other older versions have robbers steal the boat, which is prevented, the boy later kills his parents, which is prevented, and the wall is destroyed, revealing a treasure. Now these make much more sense than the version found in the Quran, which is, as is the case with other stories, retold in the book, misunderstood and nonsensical. The story in the Quran and the various hadiths are supposed to show that seemingly and apparently negative actions, even heinous crimes, can have a divine justification, provided by the moral authority called God. It is used to stop people from questioning their cruel, brutal God because humans apparently are too stupid and don't get the full picture, which is why faith, blind faith, is the preferred course of action, rather than skepticism, critical thinking and asking simple, rational questions. 
So their God keeps the followers dumb and issues senseless commands, which they simply accept. Now there's hundreds of esoteric interpretations of these incidents, but I have some very practical and rational questions that come to mind immediately, questions I would love to ask this person in the video. Why does it take the guidance of a devil to get things rolling initially? Why can't a god simply instruct his prophet properly? Why is Moses not in touch with his god, but his fisherman is? Because how can a fisherman have a better connection or link to his god than a prophet? Are these really blessings in disguise? Why not simply stop the, the evil king from seizing birds? And why destroy the source of income of the fisherman instead? If, as is so often claimed, the fisherman can repair the superficial damage later on, so why shouldn't the king be able to do the same thing? <laughs> why kill a boy just because he could, might, turn renegade? Why kill a boy instead of just simply alleviating his doubts? Why not have him killed by a venomous snake or natural disaster instead of having a human kill another human? Why create the boy in the first place? If this omniscient God knew, he would need to be killed later on. What happened to the statement, there is no compulsion in religion? Why not send the parents a to-do list to indoctrinate the boy properly? And does this God know no mercy? And why, why have a human straighten a wall without payment? Nobody knew the wall was special, so why reject payment and draw attention to it? And why allow the wall to crumble in the first place? Is this God too weak to keep a wall straight? Why would anyone hide anything like a treasure? What is this treasure? Why hide the treasure from the Father who could do a lot of good with it? And why worry about worldly treasures in the first place? Why not treat those worthy of a piece of the treasure accordingly? So there's a, I don't know, there's a lot of issues with this story. And anyone who wants to dig deeper can read up on this fairy tale in an endless number of books, all centered around this incident and its varied and very different interpretations. This is my take for this, and this is the, the kind of questions that I would ask Hamzat Sources and see if he has an answer. Thanks for your time.